Swati Ka from Bangkok, Thailand. This is the Change Guru, and this is a place where we have a weekly conversation about all things midlife. And today, I want to talk to you about how to enjoy travel. Travel is one of my all-time passions. I have a feeling it kind of came from default because I've been living in Australia on and off for 30 years. I'm a dual American and Australian citizen. And one thing you learn very quickly if you live in Australia is you have to get used to flying. It's like Sydney to Los Angeles, where I'm originally from, is about a 13-hour flight. So when you do that over 30 years, you start to get really used to spending a lot of time in the air. And that, in turn, has opened up the door for me to travel all around the world and actually be fine with long-haul flights. So today I want to share with you five things that I always take on board with me that seem to make a long time in the air a lot more reasonable. Now, one of the first things that I always take on board with me is um, noise cancellation headphones. Um, I just get really into the movies when I'm on a plane. I just use that as my time to really catch up on, on movies. And depending on where you sit and what plane you fly, there's all different kind of, kinds of headphones that they give you. So I like bringing uh, my own. These are actually a good couple of years old, but what they do is they will they're they're good headphones normally and then you turn that on and it cancels out a lot of the airplane noise they're not cheap this was these were expensive but i've had them for at least maybe five years three to five years i'm probably due for a new pair so i've gotten so much value out of them and when you just want to zone out and watch a movie they're comfortable more comfortable than the airlines um, headphones and they just um, they let you get into into a zone so you don't even think about flying you can just focus on the movie usually on a long-haul flight the airlines will give you one of these some aren't giving them like they used to for some reason I don't know where I picked this one up but it's really really good and basically you know it is just I can really go into a zone of just, it just helps me sleep so much when I am on the flight. And what I also find is that when I am traveling and I'm in a hotel, when I use, when you're in a hotel, usually there's a lot of lights and, um, you know, it's, you're just on different time zones. I just find that wearing these at night, especially when I travel, helps me have a fantastic sleep when I'm in a different place. So this helps me sleep on a plane and it also really helps me um, sleep in a hotel. It's a little bit better quality than the ones that the planes give you, but even those are really helpful. But having, having your own that's always there for you is so great when you travel. The third thing that I always take with me when I am flying, especially on long hauls, is some type of serum or cream. Actually, on this trip, I'm completely out of um, product. It's really, really weird. So I just popped into a local, um, a local pharmacy and just got this thick night cream. And I just, this is the time when you're on a drying flight, a really dehydrating flight, it feels so good to put something really super rich on your face and almost treat the whole flight like a spa experience. So I'll literally, as soon as I get on the plane, I'll go wash my face and I'll put on something super rich. And then through, through the flight, I'll just kind of keep my keep it on. And it's amazing when you get off the off the flight, your face is not greasy or anything because your skin just drinks it up. So I've used um, really good quality serum. Uh, this isn't good quality at all, but it's fine. It's super rich. I've used coconut oil, just something that is, and oil is a good one to use, but something that is kind of greasy thick, something that you probably would never uh, wear in public. No one's going to see it and it, your skin just completely drinks it in. So it's a little bit like having a facial while you're flying. I don't know how old this phone is, but it has all my podcasts on it. So if for some reason the in-flight entertainment is, is not working, I don't have my computer or whatever with me, I can listen to my podcast. It's got a Kindle on there, Kindle app on there, which is free, so I can read my books. And what I also like about this old phone, especially for traveling, is that I can use the camera function and take pictures. And if for some reason I'm in a situation where 
uh, there's a chance of the camera getting damaged, like I went um, tubing in Bang Bang Lao last year, and I brought this camera because I figured if it got wet, it wasn't the end of the world. If, if it got ruined, it didn't, but it would, wouldn't be a problem for me rather than using my new phone. So you can use this as a backup camera in situations where you're a little concerned that maybe the camera is going to get damaged or it's no big deal if you lose it. But I just find for podcasts alone, if I'm in the airport for a long time on a delay or if I'm on the plane and there's no movies or movie, I've, I've seen all the movies or I don't want to watch movies anymore, um, this is a real lifesaver for me. And my fifth tip for things to carry on is my pashmina. Uh, this is a lifesaver. Airports are always freezing, freezing cold. And uh, so it's always, I always have a pashmina with me. And you know, pashminas, they can range in price from five bucks to, you know, how long is a piece of string? Quite expensive. I think I just got this, this one's quite old. Um, I don't even know where I got it. Maybe I got it in Thailand a while back, but I bring it with me. I have several, and I always have one with me in my carry-on to use in the airport or on the plane if for some reason it's cold on the plane. I also find in um, countries, in especially traveling in Asia, the more conservative countries, having a shawl is really super important as a sign of respect. So if you are happen to go into um, Buddhist temples, you usually need to, or any kind of um, religious area, you generally need to cover up. I also find it as a woman, if I'm in a rural area where it's very traditional and conservative, it's just a sign of respect to the other ladies there to just cover myself up. I've never gone wrong with this. Another thing that you can use, I don't know if I can show you properly, but I've used this before with pashmina is for some reason I was somewhere and I didn't have a proper purse. Maybe I went shopping and I didn't have a big purse with me. So what you can do is you can tie it in a bit of a knot. This is where being a Girl Scout comes in really handy all those years ago learning how to how to be a little um, inventive. And then you can just put it around there and just stuff stuff whatever I'm just stuffing all the things that I just showed you yeah you can just stuff it right in there and see and you know it does it does the trick for a little bit the funny thing is when I've done this before and I've had like maybe clothes that I've bought or something like that stuffed in here this is how a lot of um, moms carry their babies in some countries, especially in rural areas. And so I just remember clearly one time walking through a market and this was full and people were looking at me like, that lady's got a baby? They were like trying to look inside, see, you know, what, what kind of baby I'm carrying. Now, I'd like to hear from you. What is your favorite thing to bring on a plane? What really makes that a special experience when you know you've got that go-to thing? I'd love to know your tips. So can you post it below and share what you do when you travel, especially on a long haul? Thank you so much for watching. Go travel. And uh, look, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.